Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another ability card build as you could probably tell from the title and the thumbnail. And today's is going to be specifically the best melee build that I've ever used. Basically the one that whenever I feel like stabbing people or slashing people, you know, to kill them instead of shooting them, this is the build I use. And so like always, we're going to start it off with uh, the weapons that I recommend for this build and then also an outfit and then we'll go through the ability cards. You can always just skip to the ability cards if you don't care about the other stuff, but it's very cool stuff, so you might want to see it. But if you find yourself liking this video or finding it useful or anything like that anywhere along the way, definitely leave a like on the video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. That way you'll be able to see a lot more content just like this that you'll probably also enjoy. But with all that in mind, let's just dive on in and start off with the weapons that make up this build. So the first weapon, just fitting the theme of the build that I want to show, is a bow. And you can use either the improved bow or the standard bow. It doesn't really matter. I like using the improved bow and I like using this variant of it. It doesn't make a huge difference. Like I said, this just fits the theme and because obviously it's a melee build it's not going to be super important what your other weapons are it's just just in case you know you have to use something other than a knife like let's say you know someone's got a, like knows exactly where you are and you're too far away to kill them with a melee weapon then it's great to be able to pop something else out and my themed weapon for that is a bow so that is the bow that I or that is the main long arm weapon that I recommend with this build then simply because we cannot take the holster off you have to have a holster on so therefore you have to have a sidearm the sidearm I choose for this build is a sawed-off shotgun. Again, I think it fits the theme pretty well. This is a build where you're killing people up close, so the sawed-off shotgun is a super effective weapon when you're up close to people. Uh, it can also be used versatilely, so you could pop some explosive rounds into this and then shoot from a distance and you can still kill, kill people pretty dang well, especially if you pop into Deadeye. I definitely recommend, I mean, use whatever is going to be your best sidearm because you have to have a sidearm, so therefore, you know, you might as well equip whatever you're best with, but for that, I like to use the sawed-off shotgun. Just because, like I said, I think it fits the theme of being nice and up close. And that way, let's say someone else gets the upper hand, you can quick whip out your shotgun and kill them because you're nice and close. So that is the sidearm for this build. And as far as melee weapons go, my number one choice is going to be tomahawks. And you can either use the ancient tomahawks or the regular tomahawks. It doesn't matter. I like them the most because they've got a nice long range so you can engage in your melee kill from slightly farther away than the knife, but you can also throw them. So the throwing knives are also going to be an equally good choice. They work really well. The advantage of these is you can carry eight of them them and you can also melee so you can melee them or throw them the only thing about them is is most kills uh, or most shots with the throwing knife unless it's a headshot will not kill in one throw so that's why i like the tomahawk better then we have our outfit and as you saw from the thumbnail we're going for a very native themed outfit here i i went back and forth on what i wanted it to be but i was like you know what people have been asking for some native outfits and i do have a couple ones that i really like so this is the one that i chose to use for this build if you want to see a video of me showing uh like my top five native outfits later on uh, just let me know down in the comment section because that is definitely something I could do. But let's just go through this outfit. So starting us off, we have a uh, Zapata headband, which can be purchased for gold bars from Mad Nazar. I like the way it looks. It's I think it's the only headband in the game. So if you wanted to go with a headband, that is the one you have to go with. And uh, yeah, I like this one. So that's the headwear I went with for this outfit. And as you can see, the haircut, I went with uh, darker hair. I think I went with the black hair and this uh, nice shape down the sides, but the long ponytail, the long braided ponytail on the back. I think it matches really well. Well, no facial hair, but I did leave the stubble on. So that's the uh, that's the hair as far as that goes. As you can see, the shirt option I chose was no shirt. Uh, obviously, you could add a shirt if you want, but I think it looks a lot more intimidating when you've got someone without a shirt running at you. So that's why I went with no shirt. Then for the gauntlets, the lighter tan variant with the blue uh, the blue thread or whatever you want to call that of the bindweed gauntlets. Again, these are something that can be purchased from Madame Nazar. Uh, I like the way they look. They definitely look great with this outfit, in my opinion. Then for the weapon equipment, I didn't want any weapon equipment but unfortunately, like I said, you have to have a gun belt on. So I use the rope gun belt as it's the most minimalist one that exists in the game. This one can be purchased from any clothing shop or tailor. It does cost gold bars, but I think it only costs one or two for each variant. So I use the light variant because it matched the pants the best. Then for the pants, I use the plate up pants. And uh, these are another thing that costs gold. I think they cost two gold bars uh, for these pants, but you can be, you can purchase them from a clothing shop or a general store. I think they look nice. They've got the leatherish buckskin looking material material and then they've also got the uh i don't know 
what you call that, the cloth hanging down in the front and back that you'll see in a lot of historical photographs of uh, natives. So I think it looks really nice. I think it matches the outfit really well and gives it, you know, a more unique look than just using one of the other buckskin pants that are available. But that being said, if you don't want to spend gold, there are alternatives that you could use that all look pretty nice too. But these are the pants that I chose for this outfit. Then for the boots, I went with the uh, brindle shoes and I chose to use these uh, slightly darker brown ones with the cool red, blue, and white styling on the top. I just think they look really, really nice with this outfit. And they obviously look, they're probably the most native looking footwear that's currently available in the game. Uh, I just really like how they look. And then of course, no spurs because that would be really out of place with this outfit. But that is the outfit in its entirety. Like I said, I like how this one looks. It's one of my favorite native outfits I've ever come up with. And I think it matches this build really well because, you know, it's a melee build. So, and that's also why I included a bow with it because I think it fits that theme. I mean, obviously natives didn't just use bows all the time, especially not by the time that this game takes place. But that's beside the point. The bow is really fun to use. And I think it fits the, uh, you know, the theme of the outfit and the build really well. All right, but now we're down to the meat and potatoes of the build. And that is going to be the ability cards. And so, uh, like always, there's four cards and we're going to be using all of them are going to be decently important for this build. So the first one is going to be the dead eye card. And for this one, you really have to use SB. And the reason we got to use this is because, well, we'll just read it. It says, well, dead eye is active. Enemies are significantly less accurate when shooting at you. And your accuracy is significantly reduced. The rate at which your dead eye drains is increased. So this one makes perfect sense for a melee build. So for one thing, when you start sprint, like you're going to want to sprint at your opponents when you're going to kill them or stealth kill them. But since there's a mini map that shows where you are in most instances, sneaking up is hard in this game. But if you're sprinting at them, you can quick pop on your dead eye and then it makes it really hard for them to shoot you, like exceedingly difficult for them to actually kill you because they can't hit you. And by the time they figured out, you know, that, oh crap, this guy's using SB, you've normally got your knife in their throat or your tomahawk in their head. So it's it's definitely the card that I go with for this one that you could use probably most of the dead eye cards, but I think if you don't use SB, you're just going to get shot more often than not, and it makes it much harder to do a melee build if you're not using SB. So that's the first card that I recommend for this build. For the second one, I think it's pretty obvious. It says uh, you take much less damage from bullets while unarmed or using a melee weapon. So that's why we're going to be using of single purpose. So since this is a melee build, you're going to have a melee weapon in your hand at most times, and you're probably not going to be using your gun or your bow much. Like I said, those are for special circumstances. You want to have them with you, but your main intent here is using your knife or using your tomahawks or whatever. So you're going to have those in your hand. This one will make sure that when people are shooting you while you have a knife in your hand or whatever, you're taking less damage. So again, this is going to come in handy while you're going after them. It's going to turn you into more of a bullet sponge and keep you alive long enough to go stab them. So that's why of single purpose is the second card or the first passive that we're going to be using on this one. And so the second passive card is another defense card and it's to fight another day. And so this one is you take much less damage from bullets while sprinting. And now this one, like I said at the beginning, most of the kills you're going to get, especially PvP kills, uh, you're going to get if you're doing a melee build are going to be while you're sprinting because you want to try to quickly close the gap between you and the person as fast as possible so you can stab them because you can't kill them from long range with a knife. You got to get up nice and close. So this one is another one that's going to help you be a little bit more bullet spongy while you're running towards them because their bullets are going to damage you less. I mean, it's all very self-explanatory. But like I said, sprinting is going to be a big thing. So that's why I like this one. It, it just makes you a little bit more bullet spongy. Inversely, if you don't want to use this one, you could use uh, like Iron Lung or Peak Conditioning or something that helps you sprint a little bit more because you're going to drain less stamina with Peak Conditioning. There's lots of ways to go, but I like the defense kill, uh, build for this one. I like uh, to fight another day. I think this is a great build for it. And honestly, there aren't many builds where I use this card. So it was an excellent opportunity to use it here. Then for the third and final passive card, we're going to be using another defense card. So you can see this is definitely more of a tanky build. And this one is fool me once. So it says you take much less damage each consecutive time you are shot. This effect ends if you are not shot for 10 seconds. So again, this one is just helping you be a bullet sponge. Now people are going to be wondering why I'm going so single, you know, single focus on this. Why is it all to prevent you from taking damage? Because you're using a knife to kill people. You need to get close to them and there's a good chance you're going to get shot at least once before you're able to kill them with your knife or your, your tomahawk or whatever. And if people are using mouse or something like that where they're able to quick spam a bunch of shots even if they're just getting body shots they'll take you down unless you've got cards that are helping you take less damage so the this combination here is going to be excellent you're going to take less damage because you're using a melee weapon you're going to take less damage if you're sprinting and you're going to take less damage uh, from each consecutive shot that hits you so 
all three of these put together makes it so it's pretty dang hard to, to shoot you or uh, to kill you before you can kill them with a knife. And then on top of all of that, if you quick pop into Deadeye while you're attacking people, they're going to be much less accurate, so they might not even hit you. So this is, like I said, it's the best melee build I've ever tested out. It's the one that I've been able to go the longest with in PvP and PvE. I think if you want to go with a melee build, if you want to just use a knife, you want to ever try role-playing as someone who likes to kill their people up close and personal with a bladed weapon, then this is the ability card build for that situation. So, uh, if you've got any, if you disagree with any of these picks that I've done, or you think that there's better cards for any one of these slots, definitely let me know down in the comment section. Uh, but that is all there is to talk about for the ability card section. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.